everyone, welcome to Nashville Meets World. I'm just sitting here looking, you know, cool and casual uh, because this guy's really cool and casual. Uh, Kurt Chambers, welcome to the show, man. Man, thank you so much for having me. I uh, appreciate it. Thank you. Absolutely. It's not often that we get to have a Grammy winner sitting here. Oh, man. What did you win the Grammy for? Uh, the Grammy was for a project that I worked on with uh, my Aftermath family, Dr. Dre, it was for the Defiant Ones um, uh, documentary that we did in LA. Yep. Very cool. Yeah. And we don't get too many of that here. <laughs> <laughs> People that have won the Reynolds Aluminum Award, which is really nice because you can wrap stuff up on it and keep it <laughs> cold and hot. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> Uh, aluminum award. Yeah, the aluminum award. Uh, it's very flexible. Um, it doesn't last long, you know. It just gets thrown in the trash when you use it. Uh, here's my award. There you go. Um, oh, wow. <laughs> already sidetracked. Um, that's fine. It's, that's, that's, the way. Not, it's, that's what happens before me. Yeah, I know. Um, so I just got the press release today that you have re or you've released. Uh, don't rock the jukebox. Yeah. That. yeah. With, with a bit of a nod to Bobby Bones. Oh, for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you got that. Yeah. <laughs> Tell us about it. How did that come about? Man, it's funny. <laughs> um, I always, I, well, the song came from, um, I always go to one of my favorite bars, Losers. Yeah. Uh, Shouts out to uh, Stephen Irv. What, hold on. What, what is the difference between going to winners and losers? Is it a personality thing? Or man, I, man, well, I want to get. Well, in my, my opinion, for me, I like losers because it kind of feels like you're in someone's really cool basement. Yeah, you know, and the ceiling just feels it's low in here, and all the energy is just you know compact in there, and the band's always really, really good. You know, and it's just like it feels like you're you know in your family at your family's house, your uncle's house, or something like that. So that's the difference. Of course, they have whiskey jam and all that at losers at winners. And it just feels like, you know, you're like, all right, I'm stepping it up a little bit when I go to winners, you know, and then when you go to losers, it just feels like, so if that was their approach, they nailed it. Yeah. <laughs> they definitely nailed it. But um, that started with, uh, I was at a day party at losers, and I always go there to check out the DJ and just feel the energy in the room. And I kind of caught a, a wind of something, and I went back and I worked on the Don't Rock the Jukebox song, because, you know, I love listening to Alan Jackson when I finally got introduced to country music. And um, I was like, man, I need to, I'd love to do like my twist on that, on that song, you know? And um, I was singing the song and then I accidentally, on that second, you know, part, I said, don't rock the jukebox, my baby from, my baby left me for Bobby Bones. And it was crazy because I didn't even, it was like one of the first or second, you know, takes in the song and I was just kind of messing around and, but when I did it, the room went crazy and we just left it, you know. They thought it was cool and it's like, you know, I, nothing against Bobby. I love him. He's, he's great, so. Bobby's my opening act on Chris Country Radio in the UK. So Bobby oh, does really? like Sunday morning. They do, uh, I think it's an amalgamation of week show. So they run that and then I come on after Bobby. So he's, Bobby's my opening act. Oh, cool. Right, 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 right. right. I wish I could have an honor to say that one there. That's awesome. Yeah, Bobby didn't even know who I am. <laughs> oh, it, it's okay. Uh, yeah. Energy seems, you, you've used that word a, a few times since we started. Energy seems to be really important to you when you're just in, in your whole musical life. Does it spill out over to that or is it, is it something that's part of your life naturally that works into your music? Yeah, it's definitely. The first thing, music is the second thing. I'm, I'm totally in the energy and I'm a total space guy and the universe and all that. So, yeah, I'm big on energy, yeah, yeah, connectivity and all that. Yeah. How does that, how does that work for you? I mean, as far as the music situation goes too. For me, man, it's just all like, you know, about positivity and like, you know, you know, I'm a, a quite, you know, spiritual guy. So, you know, I'm, I'm into like, you know, just positivity and spirituality and, and, and good energy all over. So like, you know, it definitely pours into my music. I write a lot of songs about the positive side of love and 
you know, and the positive side of going to get things and just, you know, not, you know, trying your best to not let things get you down. We all have, you know, the pressures off, you know, of our go different goals and dreams and the doors that we're knocking on every day and things that we're chasing, you know, after, you know, getting stuck in traffic and maneuvering ways around that to get where we want to be. I have so. bad energy in traffic. It's, it's like, <laughs> <laughs> it's, I mean, natural traffic is, is such a pain. It's getting bad, right? It's bad. Yeah, it's and so bad. I started swearing at people from the time I end my driveway <laughs> right to the minute I get someplace. And then I'm still swearing at people because they haven't parked properly. <laughs> yeah, I'm just, it's a blue streak in my car. <laughs> How are you swearing at people as soon as you pull out of your driveway? Or do you live in like a like a overly populated area? And no, it, it's you know, <laughs> or are you just swearing at like imaginary people. You're getting ready for yeah you're practicing. It's a warm up before I get to the Got you. Got you. It's funny. In the interstate, it's just nothing but. But I think I invented a few new swear words. So well, that's always a good thing. I need to hear those. <laughs> we won't do it on camera right now. No, but no, we don't so, Pack them up and use them. how long ago did you come into country music? Um, I started making country music, probably in recording country music, and I want to say 2016. Yeah. Um, I got the idea of doing it around 2013. Uh, I was working on a project in LA with with uh, Dr. Dre and those guys, and, and you know, um, I was like, you know, I need to, I knew that I was going to get back into it in 2013. But I was working on some projects. I, I, I really didn't start until, I want to say 2016. Yeah, I kind of locked myself in uh, my big brother's studio, uh, Exhibit. Yeah. That's how to Exhibit, rapper. Uh, love you, big bro. And I locked myself in that studio and I worked on my first country EP. I hired an engineer and um, I went in and got a few songwriters in LA that I, uh, had met at the time, and um, we wrote a few songs. You know, I hired an engineer. I went there and tracked tracked the whole EP myself. Tracked all the guitars, dr live drums, bass, organs, pianos, banjos. Uh, the only thing I didn't track was the uh, pedal steel. I didn't have my, my pedal steel, and so I hired a pedal steel player. But everything else, I, I played every every other instrument on that on that project, and um, you know. Came <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's kind of the backwards thing. Usually, people come to Nashville first and do all that stuff. Yeah, I mean, I kind of, you know, multi instrumentalist and um, you know, producer as well. And I, I just wanted to like, I wanted to feel everything myself. You know, I wanted to go through that process of feeling the creative aspect of it. You know, organically, without you know, really leaning on anyone. Yeah. You know what I mean? I wanted to figure out how I wanted to approach it. And in, in country music, I've always said, and people are probably tired of hearing me say that, country music is a, has always been a very big tent, and it's one of the few genres of music that will take in different genres, and it becomes country. And so people that say, oh, you know, the, the, the urban beats that are in country now, it's, it's like, country's always done that. Cash was, not kind of considered country when he came to town. Yeah. And yet yeah. when people talk about traditional country, you know, Johnny Cash. Well, yeah. He, he wasn't, man. He was a rocker. Yeah, they didn't yeah. Like him. Yeah, it's... I don't really get into those conversations. Like, people are always going to have their opinion. Yeah. But the good thing about it is the world is going to always evolve. Yeah. So someone's always going to like what you do. Yeah. And someone's always not going to like what you do. It's, our, it's my job to be the best at what I do so that even if you don't like it, you know, you yeah, got the other people good. argue and say, man, this is, you may not like this, but this is great. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so I'm not worried about that. How has the country music community accepted this guy from LA that comes in and is relatively fresh to country and, but it's like, I'm here. Yeah. I, well, luckily for me, you know, I've been getting, you know, they've been accepting me well, and I'm appreciative, you know, for all that. But country's not new to me, you know. My my story is very interesting. I grew up in a church called um, Church of the Living God, and in that church there were no keyboards. There were all guitars and lap steels and pedal steels. Wow. So, 
So, I mean, I, I've been hearing the sonic attributes of country music before I, when I was in my mother's, you know, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> belly, yeah. you know, so growing up playing pedal steel and lap steel, and my uncles played banjos, it was, you know, it sounded like steel drivers, yeah. you know, so then, um, um, I wasn't allowed to listen to secular music, so I didn't know, I didn't know, you know, what country was, you know, the, the, the secular part of it until, you know, high school, and I was, um, I bought some music, and I was shopping, and I went out and I got some music, man. I'll never forget this day. And I went to the country section, and I picked up the Dixie Chicks Live album. And I think I picked up, I, I love to hear women sing. You know, my mother and her um, sisters are really good singers, you know. So I gravitate to a lot of great female singers for some reason, you know. So I picked up Dixie Chicks, and I picked up Gretchen Wilson. And I lied to you not, man, like, those albums changed my life because it sounded like my, it sounded like our church on Sunday mornings, wow, but just, cool. you know, and, you know, secular music, country music. And I was just like, man, this is amazing, you know? So at that point, I was just like, wow, I would ride around North Philadelphia, you know? Not such a great neighborhood. With the windows not, down, listening to great country, music. <laughs> not known for country music. People <laughs> are looking at me like, who oh, was this young black <laughs> kid listening to Earl? Yeah. You gotta die. You know what I mean? Like, this is crazy. So, um, I, that, that changed my life. And then I, then I found, you know, like the Alan Jacksons and yeah. George Strait and, man, Crosby still and Nash, like the harmonies, you know. You know, so. Sweet yeah. Judy Blue Eyes is still one of the best songs ever for her music. Oh, dude. Yeah. Man, I remember, I remember being in a writing session. I was in an R&B writing session. <laughs> and I was writing with this girl. And we fought over the arrangement of this song because I was so heavy on Crosby, Stills, and Nash at that point. And we were writing an R&B song. And when the chorus came in, I tried to go with this, like, Crosby, Stills, and Nash harmony, like, idea. And they're like... It doesn't fit when I was trying to make it fit because I was just on that kick so bad. And they were like, it don't fit. And I was just like, yeah, it fits. It's just, you know, I was totally wrong. I was wrong. <laughs> yeah, that's funny. Yeah. yeah, I know what you're saying about female artists, though. Like, to me, Fat Heart is one of the best female vocals ever because she can do the blues and she can yeah. do the Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. She's so cool. Another LA girl. Um, yeah. And you play pedal steel. And the reason this kind of perks out because I used to play. Oh, cool. Yeah. Cool. Which, uh, which brand do you have? Uh, I've always been a show butt guy. Oh, it's funny. My dad has a show butt. Really? Yeah. Show butt. I don't remember which one, but yeah, he has a show butt in his church. That's probably the first deal that I played on was a show butt. I started on a yeah. flat top. So okay. My lap. Uh -huh. And then it was tuned differently. And then we got to a lap steel. Yeah. So I was Gibson lap steel. Cool. And then <laughs> my next two pedal steels were custom made, but you, they were homemade, but all using Showbud parts. Nice. And then I, my last one was a Showbud Super Pro Double Ten. Okay. Five, eight by five. Nice. So, I love that instrument, man. I love it too. But it's the, 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 the all the mechanics. That I'm not. A, I'm not. Tech. The tech yeah, guy. For so sure, all yeah. the stuff that goes underneath. It's like yeah. Yeah, let somebody else do that. I just have yeah, no, no doubt. No yeah. desire to be more yeah. than that stuff. <laughs> You want to do a song and we'll chat some more. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, look, you have your guitar there, so. Hmm. Uh, well, um, I got a single out right now. Yeah. Uh, it's called Up in the Air. I'll do a little bit of that. Alright. You know what? I'll use a pick. How about that? Uh, you're watching Nashville Meets World Camo with my special guest, Kurt Chambers. Just finding a pick. Finding a pick. <laughs> Baby, we can learn. 
meets the world here in the place in the home of my makeup artist number one my favorite one Luz hello <laughs> he was working a lot of time with this face with this Katrina I'm going to be the, the host of a celebration of Halloween today in uh, November the 2nd El Dia de los Muertos we blend it Um, the celebration of Halloween with the uh, Mexican culture and um, we decided we lose to to do this special makeup before going to that place in Escobar in the north of the city of Buenos Aires I will show you some of the transformation with this Katrina with Luz my makeup artist because I'm going to show you a lot of artists, musicians, our culture, our beautiful Argentina, because we are a very special country that you have to, to know. You have to know, I'm sure. So, back to you, Camo, and I'll see you next Wednesday. Bye. I appreciate it. Yeah, I wrote, uh, had the pleasure to write that song with uh, uh, Ash Bowers and Allison. I think her last name is Cruz. Ah, oh, man, if I'm missing up her last name, I'm so sorry. Super early. 
Well, well it's, it's hard too because sometimes when you go to these writing sessions, you know one person, but yeah, yeah. Like, oh, I brought along a friend, and it's you, you kind yeah. of forget. This is exactly what that was. She's she was an incredible writer. So yeah. uh, I forget until it's a number one song, and then oh yeah. All right. Well, hopefully, hopefully, <laughs> well, they just had a number one with Matt Stell. So Matt Matt Stell, yeah. So hopefully, um, Batman will be a number one. Yeah. yeah. So <laughs> no, that's, that's a really great song. Um, so, are you touring a lot, or is there support stuff now, or are you... No, I'm just recording, man, just yeah. recording a lot of music right now, recording a lot of music right now, just, um, just finding a few more good songs, I got some really, really good songs that are really, really cool, they are really, really cool, so just finding a few, like, missing pieces, and, and then we're gonna, um, make a few little moves, and then I'll start playing again. Yeah. <laughs> how how different is the recording process when you're doing country the, the whole the whole process songwriting and recording country to say working with somebody like Greg? Um, I mean, I tend to like um, I'm a chameleon. I can adapt to a lot of different um, rooms, but um, I tend to like try to create the way that I like to create. But uh, you know, of course, in Nashville, you know, we we definitely care about the lyrical. Um, approach to the song, so we still, you know, grab the guitar and talk about ideas, and yeah. you know, talk about the song and the idea of the song, and make sure that it's really, really good and something that can stand alone. I, I still love to do that. Yeah. You know, I'm a fan of great songwriting, so I still do that. But sometimes, yeah, you know, I create like I create in LA. I'll, yeah. There, there are many of times that I walk into a ride with a, you know, a track that I did. The night before, and sometimes it'll be a really cool bass riff that I play, or a really cool lick on the banjo, or a really cool lick on the guitar. Or sometimes I will walk in there with a fully completed like track. I mean, and I don't mean track. You know, Nashville has this track guy thing now, but I mean like I'll have a fully completed like guitars, pedal steels, banjos, so arrangements, bridge, everything. You know, I'll just write a full song. You know, with with music and no lyrics. You know, like. You know, but that can be overwhelming sometimes, you know. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I always <laughs> like that process though. Because I used to write commercial jingles. Yeah. That's mostly what we did was you build the track first and then write the lyrics around it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To fit the client. Yeah. And, but so I like that process cool. of you know, here's here's the sound I'm after. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. And what can we do in it lyrically to make that work? Yeah, yeah, man, yeah. That's that's an LA thing, you know, and I've for been sure. Big LA. Well, I have. I spent a half an hour at the airport. That's all. Oh man, you gotta, <laughs> you gotta place your feet on the ground. We gotta get you some Roscoe's chicken and waffles in LA. Yeah. Oh yeah. So yeah, <laughs> yeah. that's. That's what we're gonna do now. All right, all right, we'll, we'll do that. <coughs> we'll do LA. And yeah, we can take you for Roscoe's chicken and waffles. My treat. You're gonna love it. All right. Yeah. <laughs> you wanna do another song? Uh, sure. Um, oh, you know what? Let me see. I haven't done this song in a while. Let me see. Uh, let me see. Make sure I'm saying his name right. You can cut this out. I think it's Matt Stell. Let's see. Let's go to reception again. Yeah, he got it. said his name. Alright, cool. Man, I haven't done this one in a while. But right. So, I wrote this song with Matt Stell. He has a number one right now. And um, this is a great song. Try to remember the lyrics, right? <laughs> All right. <laughs> so, this is, we did this on our first right, so I think it's a really cool song. Tangled up in loose ends. Some 
lonely call you up Some late night, hey, what's up? Cause when a flame burns out The inverse still smolders Thought we'd be saying goodbye Over and over and over But it was a clean break You did what you said when you closed that door I can rip it off slow So I can still feel something And not a clean break Give me something I can hold on to Like an old t-shirt or a life or two Show up where you know I'm at An update saying it's complicated that I Clean break. You did what you said when you closed that door. You got a one way ticket it on, and you ain't coming back no more. I know in the long run, this is the best way. Wish I can rip it off slow so I can feel something. Not a clean break Somewhere in a song. We have to these yeah. days. I mean, <laughs> you know, we've had a lot of music in the past several years, and not, not just country music, but all genres of music that's been kind of put out there more for a commercial. Let's sell records yeah, rather yeah, than yeah. downloads rather than paying attention to the quality of the song and making the song different instead of the same. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Man, I, I really like that a lot. That, yeah. That's cool. Thank you, man. I'm excited to get out and play and yeah. play for the fans, you know, play for everyone that's checking this out. So uh, I'm excited to play. I love the stage, you know, you know, and, um, you know, I don't know what questions you have. I'm, I'm going to this one, but some of my favorite artists are like, well, I'll even start with country. Like, I'm a huge, you know, Keith Urban and I love what he does. You Keith, know. Keith Urban and Dave Grohl, I always say this, those are two guys that if you strip away the wealth, the fame, everything, they'd still be playing in their garages. Yeah. Because they love to play. For sure. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, he's so talented. He's such a great guitar player, you know, great singer, great writer. And uh, you can just tell, like, you know, he's, he's done his homework, yeah. you know. And he keeps pushing boundaries. Every record for him pushes things out a little bit yeah. more. Yeah, yeah, I love it. He's my guy, man. Yeah. He's my guy. Who else? Who else are guys? I man, I, I, this is, I love talking about stuff like this. I'm probably it's getting so excited. Cool. But I grew up around a lot of great musicians, and I have some really good influences, influences from uh, mentors, to be better, better word. Um, but man, like I grew up around the roots and like Quest Love and those guys, and those James Poyser and. Um, man, you know, so, man, dude, I love it, man, Sly Stone, yeah, Prince, I could hear some Sly Stone, okay, yeah. all right, I'll, I'll take, take that, yeah. I'll take that, uh, per, you know, Prince, uh, man, Chic, uh, not Rogers, not Rogers, uh, you know, like, man, my inspiration, is, my inspiration comes from Donny Hathaway, you know, wow. um, uh, Herbie Hancock, you know, Chick Corea, uh, jazz guys, cool. Yeah, jazz guys for sure. You know, Ella Fitzgerald. 
Um, man, and then back over to like, you know, I'm a big Queen fan, Stained, you know? Yeah. Um, uh, sure. Aaron Lewis is one of, I've actually met him, you know, yeah. he's a great guy. Um, I love him. Um, Green Day. Uh, the, I'm a rock, jazz, R&B, country, gospel but, guy. But that that's really yeah. good. And I always say, that <laughs> the artists that really get it, listen to it. Funk? Yeah. You know, like... Yeah, I like old school funk. Like, like the day chords. And, yeah, and Tower of Power, James Brown. Tower Power. I saw Tower of Power in Toronto, <laughs> in the combo, upstairs, which is like a tiny... Bar, wow. a tiny the stage. Horns, oh, yeah, the eleven piece horns on this tiny stage. Was yeah, yeah, it, was, it was insane. It was absolutely insane. Were they all might too, or was it just? It, oh yeah, it was. It was That's crazy. It was just amazing. That was like eighty two, eighty three. Wow, it's crazy. Tower power again, man. Like, I mean, like George Clinton, people. Yeah. Yeah, I just, you know, I I studied so much music, man. You know, I just I would. You know, look at the, you know, I'll just study so many guys, man. You know, so. but it, it comes from that aspect that music is music, and it doesn't it doesn't matter what bin you put it in at the record store. For those of you who remember record stores in the UK, they still have them. We don't have any here. Yeah, they do. They're all used. UK. Them. Yeah. Uh, Thanks for keeping it one hundred. It it doesn't matter what bin the stuff goes in or what. The radio stations are saying, "Here's the genre of music. Good music is good music, whatever the genre." For you're, sure, yeah. You're bringing in yeah. all these influences, like Chick Corea and um, George Clinton and, and Prince and all this stuff. How how could that not be cool? Yeah, <laughs> you know. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I mean, those guys study. You know, you can tell. Like when you do your research and you look at. I'm a YouTuber, so I like to go on YouTube and look at it. You know. But when you look at them play, you can tell they study, you know, like, you know, so, you know. Yeah, I mean, Prince just didn't pull his stuff out of the hat. That's, that was all very carefully studied. Yeah. And he knew who he was paying homage to. Yeah. When he played his songs. Yeah. And yeah, they were Prince songs, but everybody that went before him was on stage at the same time. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, you're right. He was awesome. He's definitely, you know, anyone that knows me, they know that 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 that's my number one favorite artist in the world, Prince, for sure. How did it hit you when he passed? Man, you know, it's crazy. I've never been asked that question in an interview, but man, it it, it I, I I lost a loved one. You know, like I was, you know, I felt like I definitely lost an uncle, and I went through I went through you know, a great bereavement period for sure for for a while. You know. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's hard when, yeah. <laughs> like when you're my generation and all your rock heroes are dying, it's because they're older and yeah. it's happening. Yeah. I think the first one for me, and this was still years ago, was Joe Strummer from The Clash when he died. Oh, yeah. That was like, oh, wow. wow. And, and then, oh. you know, recently Tom Petty. Yeah, yeah. That because was, mm -hmm. those just hit out of the blue and you're not a little guy. Yeah. Prince, right after that. Yeah. Prince before Tom. Prince, Prince before, before Tom. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like, man, how how is this stuff happening? Yeah, he Prince passed, and yeah, it was, yeah, that was a tough one. I remember yeah, looking at that year. I think they were both in the same year too. <sighs> Prince was. I I can't remember, but they were pretty close together. Yeah, I was living in L.A. and I looked out side of my window that day. And I forget what what kind of tree it is, but they have like the purple yeah. leaves or something like that. Like that, I, you know. They, I looked out, whatever, and that whole tree was just purple. Wow. And I was just like, "Wow, it was alive, man." That was a, that was yeah. I made a lot of Prince influence sounding music around that time, and for about a week, mm -hmm. I went in and I just I didn't record any song. I just Track a lot of music. Was that was that the grieving process for yeah. you? Was creating music that was your own, but was really influenced by Prince. Yeah, I mean, I can't wait to like pull up that hard drive again, and because I'm sure it's some good stuff. I mean, I I, I went in the room for hours, and and I, I you know I just played every instrument. I 
all the keys, bass, drums, everything, and I just like, I just played, you know, <laughs> and recorded stuff, you know. But he did it, he, man, that guy, man, definition of an artist, yeah. you know, for sure. It's for cool sure. getting an insight into it because yeah. we we never talk, well, we rarely talk about artists in the past, but except other than in the context of it's sad he's gone. Yeah. But to get somebody yeah. that, that's played a huge part in your life and seeing how you deal with that. Yeah, I, the thing that I got from him, and like you know, at some point, you know, I would love, I would share this with you know, new artists that are coming up. The thing that I got from doing that I love was you were never going to catch them off guard. Yeah. You know, like, I come from the era of, man, always be ready to be who you are. Like, practice at home. Make that a part of your life. But, like, if you, if you go out to a bar and there's a band rocking out and you feel it, you know, you should be able to get on. If they call you on stage, like, you're an artist. This is what you do. That's your gift. You should never run out of gas. You know, and, and when you see like Michael and, well, well, Prince more, and um, like those guys like Rick James, and you know, like Stevie. Man, have you met Stevie Wonder? No. Like that guy will come to, he'll be at anyone's show, and if he feels it, he'll be like, man, I want to get up and play with you guys. And he'll get up and kill it. Yeah, like, how do you say no to Stevie, though? It's like, no, no, we got this. Dude, <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> or, yeah. And, yeah, right. Yeah. But man, like that's what he does, and he he's he's done it to. I I we had a little jam band thing that we used to do in L.A., and he came up and he jammed with us, you know, and it was incredible. And we we our set we were over. Our set was the finish, but we did another forty minutes with Stevie Wonder. And you'll never forget that. I'll never forget that, you know. But like, how many artists can do that? You know, they're like, oh, I'm not prepared, or maybe you know, like you know, you know, they're like, you know, I only kind of play what I practice, and you know, and that's cool if that's what you do. But I'm just saying for me, like. I live on energy and spare the moment and how uncomfortable am I at this point and how can I make the best out of this moment? How can I make the audience feel like, whoa, we didn't expect that. They just did that on fly, you know what I mean? So, and I feel like, you know, like those guys like Prince and, you know, like, you know, it's just like, you know, like even like newer guys like Bruno Mars, you know, they embody that thing where it's like, I live and eat and I breathe music in the moment and like man fans like they love that they love when they feel like they're getting something extra and it's our job to be equipped with that to be able to pull that off i love Bruno mars i think he's like, he's another guy again that's pulling from mm -hmm. everything that went before like prince james brown rick james john oh, mayer oh yeah he's another one yeah. Bruno, john mayer there are a few that are like you feel like he's moved a lot more into the blues side of things yeah, too, which I, I really dig. Did you, how do you like his uh, what album was that? The, 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 the trio album? Oh yeah, yeah that was cool. Did you know? Uh, well, I don't I don't know if this is correct, but they said it was his lowest selling album. But it was my favorite. <laughs> but but the thing about it is, it's like it's like movies. You get these guys that I mean they do the big blockbusters to get the money. To do with passion the, stuff. Passion, yeah, it's definitely passion project for sure, probably for him. You know, I don't know. I don't want to speak for him, but I, I, love, I love that yeah. project. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, it's time now uh, to reach into Nana's ugly cookie jar uh, because our viewers around the world send us questions. Okay. So <clears throat> uh, we don't know exactly what the question is going to be. But All right. Should Nana pull one out? All right, you guys, don't set me up now. Give me some good questions here. I don't want to embarrass myself. All right. What's the best birthday gift that you've ever received? Nor this is from Norm in Scotland. Okay. Wow, birthday gift. Man, that was a Christmas gift. Darn, I can't use that. <laughs> Uh, ah, oh, you know what? I got one. Oh man, this is uh, this is an honest answer too. I don't want you guys to go. Oh, he's you know doing. Um. Okay, so my verse, my my best birthday gift was. Okay, so 
I had a birthday party at this cl club in Philadelphia before I moved to LA. And I, I was playing, I was, used to be a lead singer of this boy rock band. And we had a party and a show. For me, it was a crazy show. We had a packed out place. It was a great show. Uh, it was my 25th birthday. And afterwards, afterwards, my mother made trifle cake. My mother always makes trifle cake for the holidays. Well, she made trifle cake for that show, and everyone demolished that cake. And the club owners, the bouncers, I mean, staff, my friends, fa you know, whatever fans that can get backstage to get to, they demolished it. Like, you know, this is crazy. This is the best. What is this? You know, like, for me, that was the best birthday gift because I got to play for my, my, my fans and my friends. But, man, I love my mother, and I love that that trifle cake so much. For me to be able to give that to my friends as a gift and they just lose their mind over that, for me, to, that, that was, me giving them that was the best gift back to me. Cool, that, that's probably the coolest answer we've had. I know it sounds like a very <laughs> political answer. No, it doesn't sound political, it sounds honest and, and real. But that's what I feel. That's what came to mind, that's what I remember. So it has to be real, you guys gotta trust me. The real, that's real, that's really the best gift. For, uh, okay, last question. Uh, <laughs> you are embarking on your first international headlining stadium tour. Mm -hmm. Who opens for you? My first international headlining tour. Who opens for me? Yeah. Man, you know what's crazy? I saw you ask someone this question, and I totally forgot that you may ask me this question. So I am not prepared to answer that at all who opens for me yeah. man that's crazy so is this one of those questions where like when it happens like you replay it and it's like you're like oh he said this man that's oh yeah this is, this is just oh, i like to get people's take on mm. on who they see as talent that's up and coming that they think yeah but it could be we've had People say, well, you know, what if this guy's on the downside of his career? And, oh, you know, God. And I'd love to have him. But, but who would you love to have? Oh, Who's man. out there that really grabs you that you think would be cool to open? Who has the same energy? Man. That's a tough one. Yeah, see, carpool karaoke's got nothing on it. This is, it's really, this is just like... Oh, who opens for me, man? I know who opens for me, man. My, man, probably my first band. Yeah, yeah, my first band. We were really good. Do you remember everybody's name in the band? Yeah, we were really good. I mean, a lot of those guys are like doing a, a great job, you know, like being working musicians for other yeah. artists right now. Well, probably my first band. Yeah. That's yeah. cool. That's like when Petty brought back my crutch. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And I, and I would probably just let those guys do whatever they wanted to do, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> there you go. Um, and if you have a question for us to answer, uh, shoot us a message in our uh, private message thing part. You know, on Facebook, and, and we'll uh, put it in Nana's cookie jar. For we sure. used to keep Nana in there, but we needed the space for the uh, the questions. So. I thought it was cookies in there. I thought you were. <laughs> I thought we were going to say how fast I can eat a cookie or something. I was like, if it's oatmeal raisin, by the way, oatmeal raisins are my favorite cookies. So if any of you want to send me some cookies, you know that don't drop, don't don't uh, roofie me now. So now, <laughs> but so now, see so your your best birthday gift. With food and now you're saying cookies. So, oh, no raisin cookies, man. All right, love them. Thank love you them. for being here. Thank you for having me. It's been me. really it's been a cool. pleasure. It's I been appreciate pleasure. it. We've got to do it again. We have to soon. We have to. Thanks for watching Nashville Meets World. Washing. Thanks for watching Nashville Meets <laughs> World. Uh, presented by Solos North. North. Boy, I'm having another tough time. <laughs> Thank you for watching. <laughs> Nashville Meets World, presented by Solus North Gulch Apartments. Live where taste matters. Thanks to my guest, Kurt Chambers, for being here. Go out and take his stuff. Thank you, man. I appreciate um, it.
and, and I'm sure you're going to love it because I do. Uh, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Oh, my way.